Hello everyone, uh, Mikey Bly here, and as promised, or threatened, I am going to dive into the prologue of Clam Man 2, after rummaging around the first game and thoroughly enjoying the silly off-the-wall humour and references to things, um, I immediately wanted to play this. So here we are, we are in the game, and it's funny too, you can tell what kind of time of day I'm recording my videos, because I've got a sunbeam just here, and that's only a certain time of the morning when it seems to intrude. Yes, I need blinds in the basement. Yes, I'm aware of this. Yes, I also think some of you may notice my hair is a bit mad at the minute. I'm not brushing it because it seems pointless at this point, to be honest. My hair is its own entity. It's this close to getting its own profile page. So, with that stuff out of the way. Yes, first Clamman game. Hilariously fun. Super amazingly great. Really enjoyed it. I, I mean, it's not a criticism, but it didn't have as much interactivity. It was more just kind of a click on this character, talk to them, move the story along kind of a thing. I don't know how the second one's going to flow. I have no idea. Um, all I know is that we're about to play it. So let's play it. Team Clam. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I'm aware what I'm playing. Thank you for reminding me. I'm really excited to know what happens with Clan Man after that first game ended. Nope, we're still the sales rep. Form, Stacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise Automated Employee Evaluation Form. GS34B. Oh, I look a little bit... I don't know, I feel like I'm a little bit older here. Sleeves rolled up mix indicates an age. And my plant not being dead too. <laughs> Learned how to water a plant, that's something. I've got a smaller cubicle though. I had a much bigger space than this before. I had like a box shelf. I, why did I get downgraded to a smaller space? Anyway, sorry. Um, uh, what? Huh? What? GS34 what now? Huh? The form. On the desk. In front of you. Are you speaking to me? A talking valuation form? That's what it says. Uh. It's a strange name. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, I'm filling in the form, I get it. So what else does it say? Welcome to your evaluation, employee number. <laughs> We're just taking a quick quarterly moment to re-establish your relationship with Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. Gotta love that bloody quarterly survey check-in stuff. Hmm. Snacky Bear what? This is for people who didn't play the first game, maybe. Um, could you refresh my memory? It's been a while. It hasn't, but let's just assume it has. Sure, that's what I'm here for. Employee evaluation and exposition. All the ease. Four years ago, more or less, you almost single-handedly stopped a horrible conspiracy set in motion by Snacky Bay Mayor King and the mob. But uh, I got some help from a duck. Me? The mob? This company produces mayonnaise? Oh yeah, I almost died. I forgot about that. <laughs> yup, you were fired for like two days and spent them snooping around. Clues, puzzles, lots and lots of talking. Lots and lots and lots of talking. Some might even say too much talking, not enough snooping. Ah, I'm not the only one to have made that comment then, obviously. Uh, no, I like the talking. Can never have too much talking. Well, it was only thanks to your wit and detective reasoning, along with the duck, that you managed to crack the case and bring justice to the villains. Yeah, it was a bit touch and go at points, though. Yeah, my man. Um, what happened then? After that, your best friend Pete, who honestly kind of betrayed you, ended up as the CEO of the company. Well, that happened before I almost died. The mayor made him the CEO before that. The mayor made him the CEO in, in, in return for bringing me to him. So, uh, and me? You got a minor promotion? It's better like this. Nepotism looks bad. This way, no eyebrows were raised. Oh, so I went from junior sales to just sales. I think that was I think that was the inclination at the end. Yeah, raise an eyebrow. <laughs> it's a form. 
it can't see you. Well, but it can talk, but I guess it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't go to eyes, but it doesn't go to mouth either. Raise it higher. It, it doesn't matter how high you raise it. The form cannot see you. Raise the roof with your eyebrow. You can raise all, the, all you want. Raise hell for all I care. The form still won't be able to see you. Lower <laughs> your eyebrow, but slowly on your own terms. Show them that no one controls your eyebrow but you. Whatever makes you sleep at night, Chief. Well, that does, evidently. Gently <laughs> wiggle your eyebrow back to its browy nest. It had an eventful day. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, okay, now I'm ready to move on. About time. Take it away, JS34B. Let's get cracking. Let's! I assure you, this won't take long. It'll take the entire bloody prologue, won't it? For this evaluation, we'll be asking you to initially state some information about yourself and then provide us with a truthful and honest estimation of your skills and abilities. Truthful and honest, you say? Hmm. Okay. Sounds easy enough. Bring it on. Okay, one. This is where I get on Monty Python when I see this. What is your name? <laughs> Try to think of something else, something better? No, but it's Clown Man. What is your position as Naki Bay Prime Mayonnaise? What is the airspeed of an unladen scholar who the Everlasty Smith? Jeez, sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. Ah, um. I said the desk can sell mayonnaise nine hours a day. It's riveting. No, let's just see your sales rep. I went from junior to senior. Is there no middle? Middle, middle, mi middle sales representative. Great job filling in those two fields. Your enthusiasm and ability to follow instructions are highly valued skills here at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. I'm sure they are. My best friends are see yours. This really necessary. Can you not give me a pass on this stuff? Speaking of skills, let's move on to the next part of the evaluation. Using numeric values, give us your own impression of your skills. And remember, please don't overestimate yourself. Or underestimate yourself. Right? Wait, what skills? The skills we would like you to estimate your level in are the following. Detection, improv, aquadynamics, and self-awareness. Improv? I'm shit at that. I'm terrible at that. Aquadynamics? Oh shit at that too. Self-awareness, terrible. Detection? I mean, still shit, but probably my best subject out of the four. De wait, what? Detection? Detection! You're seeing and hearing things. Don't worry, it's not because you're crazy, it's because everyone else is. All, literally all the time. This is your ability to observe. It's your level of perception in everyday life. What is this good for? High detection allows you to take note of minor details in conversations, uh, be logical, rational. It's your ability to observe, understand, and see through the world. Low detection means you're completely oblivious of what's happening around you. It also means that basic mathematics might as well be magic to you. Okay, detection probably is my best of those four. Ah, and I mean, I'm not just saying that. I've got to be good at one of the four. It's the must-have skill for observational comedy. Well, here's the thing, the whole just so far this is called like it's like open mic is that what this one's called or is this one yeah open mic is a prologue and um what's the full game called oh i feel terrible wait give me two seconds i forgot what the full game is called already headliner the full game is called headliner so it seems like we're going on the comedy route and it does seem like he was a little bit of a smart arty comic kind of character in the first game, so I guess they're just going full hog with that this time. Oh, right, okay. Detection. Got it. Oh, and it, it highlights the ones you've already gone through. That's good, in case you forget. Improv? Improv! Wit! Imagination! Never mind factually being an invertebrate. This is your funny bone! This is your ability to think on the spot. Come up with ideas. Be clever. The purest, most innate form of funny. I'm terrible. It takes me a long time to think of funny things to say. Seriously, the amount of times I've... Okay, this goes back to when I was younger and people used to shout random stuff at you. Uh, random stuff at me when they walked past me. My hometown was a charming place. They'd say something purely pathetic to try and wind me up. I'd get home and then I'd go, that's what I should have said back to them. 
I, that's how slow I am on the ball for this kind of stuff. I'm terrible at improv. What do I need that for? High improv helps you come up with solutions to otherwise obtuse problems. It helps you be clever and come up with ideas. Low improv means that you're literal, non-creative. You struggle to think of things to say and you have a hard time coming up with jokes on your own. Hey, it's me! It's me! It's 100% me! Improvisational comedy, basically tapping into the absurd, the strange, the surprising. It's the answer to how do you come up with this stuff? Okay. You mind translating that to a concept I can understand? Fine. It's a sort of... It's sort of a mix between charisma and wisdom. I mean, not really, but it's the closest comparison I can make. This is... Okay, I mean, if you didn't already click, this is just stats. Whatever numbers you give to these things is what your character's stats are going to be. It's like D&D. &D. Or pretty much any game now where you pick your character's strength and stuff before you start the game. Improv. Right. Makes sense. Aquadynamics. Aquadynamics. The ability to uh, uh, know how to pass through water with great speed and efficiency. <laughs> You're underwater, remember? This is your ability to do literally anything physical and how quickly you and your body react to things around it. Ooh, this is not my this is not my forte. Why would I care about getting physical? Mm. Low aquadynamics essentially mean that you're clumsy. You struggle with even basic physical tasks. I mean, yeah, it's a bit, uh, maybe not like bottom of the scale, but only a few steps from the bottom. However, high aquadynamics means an understanding of physics. You sense and feel movement and motion more than the average clam. It's also how kinesthetic you are. Oh, I love that word, kinesthetic. Sorry, and how proficient you are at visualizing thoughts and ideas with your body. Um, yeah, that's pretty low for me. Don't knock physical comedy. Slapstick is art too. Uh, it's true. It's not one of my favourite forms of comedy, but I can get a giggle out of it. Again, why should I bother being good at this? It's not like I'm going to fight people. There's plenty of reasons to get physical outside of combat. Imagine, with high aquadynamics, you'll be able to open any jar you come across. Is that a bloody hint? Is that a, is that a hint as to what's going to happen at some point? We should put my aquadynamics higher now because I can't open this jar. Alright, seems simple enough. Self-awareness? Self-awareness. Nothing is simultaneously both more beneficial and harmful in comedy. And life. This one is a little trickier. A normal balanced person would place smack dab in the middle of this scale. Then again, who wants to be a normal person? Not me! Boring. Still fuzzy on what this means? Let's look at extremes. A low self-awareness means you don't really think of how people perceive you. So you're able to blurt out just about anything in conversations, appropriate or not. It also means that you don't really think and reflect on your actions, your morals, or your sense of humour. You just kind of do. You're just freewheeling all over the place. So what does self low self-awareness mean in practice? Bumbling on awareness of yourself and the lives of others. More options to joke about. Confidence through blissful ignorance. That's the complete opposite of me. And fewer interesting conversations with yourself, of course. So what about high self-awareness? High anxiety and nervosity. Oh, now we're in my wheelhouse. But also a deeper insight into the thoughts and feelings of others. Empathy. The ability to second-guess yourself and reconsider whether or not something is worth joking about. Oh, it me. Then again, a really high self-awareness might skew your view of yourself and others. If all you can think of is how you're perceived, chances are you'll end up feeling like the world revolves around you. It's weird in a way to put it that way, isn't it? Because I overthink every single interaction I have with anybody. And as soon as I'm finished an interaction, I'm just like, damn, should I have said this? Should, shouldn't I have said that at this particular time? They didn't seem too happy with me. I hope I didn't upset them. Honestly, that's my life. That is me every single day when I interact with people. I never thought about the egocentric side of it, though. Because if you're so, if you come, if you're, I mean, yeah, anxiety is the, the big part of it. It's like, it's, it's a worry more than anything else. But if you spend all your time worried about what other people might have thought about you and how you might, like, if you think you say something wrong to somebody and then in your head you're thinking, geez, what if they're thinking about what I said? That is a bit egocentric. 
in a way, isn't it? It's because like you're assuming that that person has got nothing else to do other than think about something you said. That's an interesting way of looking at it. I mean, I've never looked too deeply into that side of things, but that me, it me. Uh, uh, the high self-awareness of sure, um, high, what was the other one, detail? Detection, sorry. I'm, pre I'm pretty good with details, I'll be honest. So they're my two high ones, the middle two of them, my low ones. Right, I think I get it. It's important to remember, neither option is inherently better than the other. The most balanced people are between 40 to 60 in a scale of 100. But again, where's the fun in balance? Okay, good. Done. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, Alright, let's do it. What would you say is your strongest skill? Oh, thank God, I don't have to actually assign numbers to things. Um, I think it's probably this and then this. So self-awareness. Perfect! The company appreciates employees always keen and willing to apologise, especially when it isn't their fault. That is me. Holy shit, it's 100% me. <laughs> Even more so since I've got the, the British background and we're famed for apologising for like nothing and I now live in Canada which are also famous people for doing the same thing so I'm like I'm, I'm both both worlds are in me right now um what about your second highest skill detraction no self-awareness high I don't like this I feel like I'm bragging please don't think I'm bragging <laughs> detection fantastic your observational skills are a valuable asset to this company almost as valuable as your ability to spend 10 hours a day doing menial repetitive tasks very good at doing that. What skill of yours could use some improvement? I'd probably... I'd probably put... This is tough. This is tough. I'm really kind of level on my ability to think on the fly and make jokes on the fly and my physical thing. I'm maybe just about better at... Maybe just... Minus one. Oh no. Not to worry. Here at Stacky Bay Prime and Ladies, we don't mind if you think less. In fact, we encourage it. Uh, finally, what is your greatest weakness? Well, it just leaves the one. Aquadynamics. Oof. While we regret having learned this, we would like to congratulate you for your ability to handle a pencil in this form. Please try to hand it in before you inevitably tear it apart or set it on fire. <laughs> Definitely me. I think we've got me in a nutshell, in a clamshell. And that's all your skills estimated. To confirm this, we're going to need your signature at the bottom of the page. Is the following information correct? Yep. Well done. You've successfully managed to answer a number of questions about yourself. This information will be processed and checked for discrepancies by an AI far superior to yourself. Is it the same AI we bumped into in the bloody when we broke into the records department in the first game. <laughs> Did it get a promotion or is that a demotion? From a security bot to a evaluation form checker bot. Wait, detection, I've flipped the form? Ah, ah, ha ha, two-sided. There seems to be a number of simple instructions on the other side of the form. Already my stats are in, in affecting the game. Basic tutorial, if they're important, they'd be placed on the front of the form. We're done here. I think this might be handy. Um, form, okay. Interacting with people can be tricky, but as long as you understand the two different types of skill checks, you will manage just fine. The two types are the roll check and the static check. Okay, what's the roll check? The roll check is indicated by the name of one of your skills. Your modifier to that stat and the difficulty of the check. Doing a roll check means rolling a d20 or a 20-sided die, adding your modifier and hoping it's higher than the target number. It's D&D. &D. It's, it's a bloody... It's a comedy RPG. So it's a comedy RPG adventure version of D&D. &D. <laughs> oh, I, I had no idea this is where this game was going, but I am 100% fine with it. Even if you have amazingly high or frustratingly low stats, you can always fail or succeed a roll check immediately by rolling 1 or 20 respectively. These count as criticals and bypass all modifiers. In short, rolling a 20 always succeeds and rolling a 1 always fails. Try to understand. Hey! I rolled a 14 plus the 1. 15. <laughs> okay, that's enough to understand. Great job! Is there anything else you want to know? Uh, static check? Compared to roll check, static checks are simple 
A static check is invisible to you unless you fulfill its conditions. Does this mean I can just do something without rolling? If static checks can be spotted by their appearance, the relevant stat followed by an indicator of how high or low that stat needed to be for that option to show up. For example, someone with high detection will notice things someone with low detection won't and are given the option to act on that. Awesome. Detection, just average. You misspelled detection. Wait. Detection! I put detection as like my second highest stat and I didn't see the spelling mistake. That's it. That's how it works. You can thank your detection for that. Of course, static checks apply to all stats and require either very low stats or very high ones. And that's about it. Any other questions? This game's got so much potential because depending on what you pick each time you play the game, different options and avenues are going to pop up. Oh, that's amazing. This is, this is huge. I love this idea. I understand how everything works now. I'm ready. Thank you for your time, and thanks for all your hard work here at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. End. Oh, that was great. I love that idea so much. Hey, Pete, how are you doing? Sorry we can't see your head properly, but it's fine. Three knocks on your cubicle and a creeping smell of coffee. You already know who's coming to see you. Hey, man. Is that the, uh, the evaluation form? Almost done? There's voice acting this time! Oh, it's great to hear voices to characters, and Pete's not too far off how I performed him, I think. Um, yeah, I did do. Yeah, yep, what's up? Not much. Not much. <clears throat> okay. Alright, hot take. The pickle is the most important part of the burger. Change my mind. The least important part of the burger, you heathen! Crazy, you can be more naughty, you absolutely great. No, no, there's no way. No, it's, it's totally wrong. Oh, no speaking for this bit then. Alright, then what is the most important component of the burger? I mean, some people don't use buns. Some people have lettuce. I mean, this, the, 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 the burger itself. The meat. You don't get it. We're talking about the most important component. The bun and the patty are given. Without them, there is no burger. Shit, that's a good point. Bread and meat. That's heavy. That's rich. You need something to cut through it. Mail won't do. Ketchup isn't enough. Veggies won't cut it. Yes, they bloody will. Slap me some fried onions on my burger and I'm a happy chappy. You need something with decent acidity. Something vinegary. No, no. I'll eat burgers with pickles in them, but uh, believe you me, I'm not the biggest fan of them. But in a burger, they do work, but I, I can totally live without them. Pickle power, dude. Pickle power. Anyway, that's not why I came to see you. No, oh, good. I thought you really just came to talk to me about fast food. What are these at the side? I can't click on any of them at the moment. Okay. We work at a mayonnaise company. Shouldn't official company policy be that mayo is the most important? I mean, I do want to continue this discussion. He reconsiders for a second, but eventually returns to the same conclusion. As long as we make sure to state these opinions are our own and not reflective of the company, we should be fine. Hey, really starting to pull out the CEO style talk here. Good for you. I guess four years is a bit. You get a bit used to it. Still, might want to keep quiet about this convo outside of work. You know, precautions. Alright. What is it? Come on. I'll show you. Alright. Lead the way, good buddy of mine. Echoes of light metallic taps and clanks climb their way up the elevator shaft. The low peaceful rumbling of the bowels of Snacky Bear Prime Mayonnaise's office building. The relaxed breathing of a giant concrete behemoth. Nice description. Well written. It sounds normal, like there's no cause for alarm. Peaceful. All is well in Snacky Bear. And for the first time in a while, Pete seems excited about something. Amazing, an elevator shaft, I can't believe it. Or oh, sarcastic, amazing, an elevator shaft, I can't believe it. Spask in the glory? What exactly are we looking at, Pete? Remember our old boss? This is his old private elevator. Oh! After he, uh, 
disappeared, uh. there was no way of getting inside. It just sat there. Until today. He didn't disappear. Wait, no. I got him arrested. Did he disappear after getting arrested? Or do you mean disappeared as in, in jail now? Yeah, I guess that's not that important. He takes a step forward, carefully scanning the inside of the shaft. It must have short-circuited or something, because he just shot up through the roof this morning. Oh! Oh, that would explain why we're looking at it, just a shaft. But why would the doors have opened? Um... Um... Wait, it shot up through the roof? Wait, no, wait, why would a button do that? Beats me, dude. Maybe someone just hit it really hard. That's not how elevators or buttons work. It's like people with keyboards who type, like, whack a button and then nothing happens and they hit it harder. That's not how it works. <laughs> That's not how elevators work. Normal elevators, sure. This was a private elevator. Might have had some secret tech installed. We don't know. Pete, I'm telling you, they don't build elevators with eject buttons. Oh, an eject button! That's gotta be it! This isn't Willy Wonka and this bloody glass elevator. Is it? That's some spy movie shit, dude. Secret agents escaping hideouts with their customized elevators. Probably have rocket engines on the bottom. And machine guns. Okay, this conversation is completely getting derailed. Maybe we should just shove it along a bit now. Oh, God. Why would you put machine guns on the bottom of the elevator? Wouldn't you put them on the top? Flamethrowers too? Don't know. Hang on. No. No. Hang on. No. Why would you put them on the bottom? Smart thinking. That way, they could take down the fighter jets chasing them. Oh, snap. They said fighter jets? This conversation's gone. We've lost it. We've lost them. He nods, deep in thought. They had to, man. This guy was a top-level secret operative. They're busting out all they got to stop him stealing the secret documents. My god, what is going on? Yeah, those secret documents are supporting us. They are secret. Can't let them fall into enemy hands. Man, it ain't easy being a spy, I think. Good thing they have those rocket engine machine gun elevators to help them. Let me just make a note. Rocket engine machine gun elevators. Steel, oh, adapt idea from Clan Man 2. Um, anyway, yes, cool, let's move on, shall we? Uh, yeah, let's just go, let's just go, jeez, let's well, just do it. You, went, uh, you said it went through the roof? Pete shakes his head, trying to wrap his head around the situation. Straight through the roof. Like a bullet, man. Just burst through. Some private elevator, huh? Did you check the roof? It's just a wreck. We managed to open it up, but there was nothing inside. No secret documents, no spies, no machine guns. I noticed something, though. He looks excited. Whatever this is, he can barely wait to tell you about it. But what? You know how the regular elevator has ten buttons? <laughs> this one had more. The air is taken out of him. He was hoping to surprise you. Tangible disappointment. I mean, where else was he gonna go with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one had 11. It goes up to 11. How awesome is that? There's a secret floor. Oh, shit, of course. That's what that means. Hang on, what was that about a quest? Oh, right. Sometimes you'll come across a task or a mission that you can choose to pursue. If you do that, the quest will be added to your quest journal. You can then refer to your journal whenever to check what you have done so far and what you need to do next. Uh, what's the point of these quests you call them? Depends on the quest. Most of the time you'll learn something or get a deeper understanding of something. Or someone. Cool. That's knowledge and ideas you can use in your repertoire. However the shape they take is decided by the outcome of that particular quest and your choices. Oh my god this game is so cool! My repertoire? We'll get into that later. For now, just remember the saying, quest good. Alright, how do I check the journal? Click the check mark icon to your lower left. Oh, this one. Next to your big dumb face. Hey. Hey. Oh, nothing happens when I click it. You can't do it while talking to people. That would be rude. <laughs> Says you. Okay, got it. Thanks, me. No problem, me. Cool, so, so I'm, I don't know how the save function works in this game. 
Oh, I can't save during the conversation. Alright, I guess we have to wrap this conversation up. I wanted to wrap it up, but never hang on. Um, uh, that's awesome. Undeniably so. I know. Finally, something interesting. Honestly, dude, the CEO deal kind of sucks. It's just work on work on work, and I'm just about ready to lose it. I needed this, man. My sanity needed this. Ah. Okay, let's not go to sack. I'm happy for you, man. It's hard to tell if he's more excited for the secret floor or your reaction. Either way, Peter's over the moon. You haven't seen him smile like this in a long time. So, how do we get down there? Hesitation. He didn't think of that until now. Uh, I don't know. Kind of high to jump. <laughs> Detection average, improv minus one. Hmm. Is it too high to jump? Gipping void of death in elevators. <laughs> Who knows? Why not test it out? It's too high. Well, my improv being minus one, I can come up with another way, huh? Ooh. Oh, hey, I got it. Whoa, that's a beauty, that is. Pete already went up, right? Maybe go down, except not in the shaft. Ooh, maybe the secret floor is on a, secret floor is on a lower floor. You know, on street level. Oh, yeah, smart dude. How did you think of that? <laughs> it wasn't high improv, though. I have high improv. I don't know what that is. Probably means I don't have it. Anyway, should we go check the street straight away? Ah, you want to find the secret of the floor or not? Come on, let's go! Oh man, I can't wait. Boof. So now, hopefully... Can we... I feel stupid for not noticing this before. I damn it. I still didn't get the chance. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop. I'm gonna have to stop, otherwise I'm gonna be playing for like hours upon hours upon hours here. Um I think the sign is you Poseidon, huh? Interesting. So it's a club? Is that what that is? Is it like a club on the on the in the basement? Alright, cool. We'll find out more about it pretty soon. This is so fun. Uh, if you want to play this prologue to Clan Man 2 yourselves, it's it's a free-to-play prologue. Um, it's a link in the description below. And the first Clan Man game too, I will pop the links to. It's in a couple of places, so I'll pop the links to all the places you can grab a hold of that as well below. And um, yeah, the, the full Clan Man 2 like, store page is linked to this prologue. Uh, whatever, I'm over explaining it. There's links below. Just check the descriptions. You'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. I'm sure you've all got I'm sure you've all got high detection, high detection than I have, so I don't need to over explain this stuff. I love this idea, like a whole, like a, man, like a point and click adventure game with D&D &D aspects. I love it, I love it, I love it so much, cool. And I mean, I only love these characters from the first game, so having these characters in this kind of gameplay model, fabulous. Over the moon, actually, cannot wait to play the rest of the prologue and the full game too, which is rapidly approaching release, I think. Can't quite remember the release date, but believe you me, I'll be playing the full version of the game too. All right, don't forget to do all the regular stuff, the one like button and the subscribe button, and ringling the notification bell if you if you want to do that. Um, if you have any game recommendations for me, just want to have a bit of a general chit chat, then have it in the comments below, or you can catch me on the social media. I have been Mikey Bly, and I hope you all have yourselves a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening or night and i will see you all the next time around bye for now